8,500 yards in his career, 65 touchdowns to 24 interceptions. And he is chasing history here tonight. We'll talk about that momentarily. They spread the offense. Only man in the backfield is Daniel. Takes it at his own 22. Plenty of time. Fires over the middle. And the catch is made and across midfield down to the 45 of Southeast Missouri State is the tight end Chase Kaufman. Great job by Chase Kaufman right there. Going in, out and up. Just finding the hole in the zone. They're going to have all they can deal with Southeast Missouri State. The Red Hawks defense is going to have a tough time trying to contain all the weapons by the Tigers. You saw the one freshman, Elvis Fisher, on that offensive line. They are very pleased with how he played against Illinois. And diving ahead for yardage there is Washington. And he's close to a first down. Well, when you look, Jason Ray, at the backs and receivers, and you played with these guys. Who stands out? And you know what? They're not your teammates anymore. So go ahead. <laughs> Who's the best right now? Well, as a receiving core, those guys are great. You have co-captain Tommy Saunders. He had two touchdowns last week. He's a guy to look out for. And, of course, Chase Kaufman, who just had that big game. So it's going to be a first down situation for Chase Daniels. Swings it to the right side. Oh! from Kaufman and we talked to Gary Kingle <laughs> on Thursday about that as his big tight end has made that a habit jumping over the tackler he says look if they're going to cut me I'm jumping over them hey that's a big target right there you have to pick your place where you want to go and tackle him and as long as you know either he has the athletic ability to still keep his feet and get that extra yardage you got to love that from the big tight end Another first down, Chase Daniel with time to the right side and in and out of the hands. Once again, he was looking for Chase Kaufman. The defense for Southeast Missouri State, they will be obviously tested time and again here tonight. In particular, the linebacking crew and the secondary of Southeast Missouri State. Eddie Calvin, a junior out of St. Louis, is a speedster. and They say he's a good one. He wears number 31 for the Red Hawks. A handoff to Washington on second down. Pickup of maybe two on the play. The second carry for Derek Washington, who takes over, guys, for Tony Temple, who obviously finished his Missouri career in fine fashion in the Cotton Bowl, but a lot expected of a Derek Washington. Yeah, there is. And, and some people would question, obviously, what, he, what they were thinking or why would you use the red shirt last year? He only averaged about 10 plays a game. But this is exactly why, because you knew he had the ability. And of all the players on this offense, Coach Pinkle spoke highly of Derek Washington and his ability. Inside the five, what a play from Jeremy Macklin in the catch. And he said that he is 100%. He was back on the practice field on Tuesday. He limped out of the stadium in St. Louis over the weekend. He saw him go off on the golf cart in tears, but he says he's fine. 100% and makes a dazzling catch inside the five. So first and goal here for Missouri. Chase Daniels standing on the 10. Washington near the goal line. Did he get in? Yes! Indication touchdown. Six to nothing Missouri. Great Derek second, Washington. great second, third effort by Derek Washington. We spoke about him just a second ago. Gary Pinkle believes that he is a top weapon for this team. But as you can see, it's pretty, pretty good job here by Southeast Missouri State. But it's the determination by Derek Washington and stretching for the goal line at the end that gets him the six points. Seven plays, 70 yards. It only took two minutes and one second. And just like that, with those seven plays, it's 7-0 Missouri. Washington and the Missouri Tigers here at home and their home opener against Southeast Missouri State. Impressive opening drive. The Tigers diving in for six, and it's 7-0. And again, we talked about their punter, who does all their kicking, Doug Spada, an All-American. That punt, 55 yards, short return, only four yards for Macklin. Four wide receivers to our side. Lower portion of your screen, one to the high side. Daniel will be in the shotgun once again on his own 10. Swings it out, and the catch is made. A late hit, but no call. That's Jared Perry with the reception, his first of the uh, evening here at Faroe Field. Right here, you can see that we have, when you talk about the spread offense, first of all, it's not just about the spread from the wide receiver position, but it's also the spread from the end zone copy. You would see it better, but you can see a spread from the offensive line. What that does is it 
puts the defense in a bad position where they have to spread and, and they're not used to, especially if you're a team that's not played against this type of offense very often. It can throw you totally out of sorts. Option play. Derek Washington picks up the first down. Jason, one of the things that I don't think Chase Daniel gets enough credit for is how he is able to rush the football. He can run a little bit besides passing. He can. He he impressed me a lot last year. Um, we all know about his arm and about the touch that he has on the ball, but Chase Daniel can really run. His, his speed is deceptive, and he's also slippery, so he's a great runner as well. Second possession for the Missouri Tigers. They'll swing it to the right side. That's Saunders with plenty of room. There he goes down the sideline and brought down inside the 35-yard line. Victor Anderson with the stop, but there's the co-captain, Tommy Saunders. Right here, you can see it's just a mismatch. The defense got into a bad coverage from the beginning. You have three wide receivers on the right side, and they only had two defenders. Great job downfield of blocking by the wide receivers. Saunders gets the scoot down the sideline for the big game. That was Chase Coffin with the big block, the tight end. Underneath, catch made at the 28-yard line. And again, another first down picked up for the Missouri Tigers. And there's a hurt Red Hawk. And it's Vincent Anderson who is down. And one of the things that may happen in this game tonight, guys, and Dan, we, we could see a, a Blaine Gabbard get some playing time. A lot of people know about him, not just statewide, but nationwide as a blue chip quarterback. But depending on what happens here, if the game becomes lopsided, which many predict that it will, we're going to see the second teamers, third teamers may see Blaine Gabbard. And that's what the good thing about having this type of opponent be in your second game, and you see this across the country, and it's a different kind of mode of thought for coaches or, or the schedule makers to have that big guy, that big hitter type of team that you play in the opening game because there's so much anxiety and, and going into that first game. But then to reel it back and have a team like this you play in the second game, it affords you the opportunity that if you can pump some points up on the board that you can get to see some young guys and get them some experience. One man in the backfield. Daniel will hand it off. Blockers ahead. Washington knocked out of bounds inside the five. Derek Washington first in goal for Missouri. 19-yard gain for the Tigers. There's one thing about the spread offense. DBs are spread out and they're unable to stop the run. That's the huge thing about the spread offense. If you're blocking on the perimeter, you have big running games. And that's not good to see. Washington limping off the field. Jimmy Jackson, Gary Pinkle, affectionately refers to him as the old man, is in. And that's a touchdown, Jeremy Macklin. Two possessions, two TDs for Missouri. Exactly what we expected. They're hitting on all cylinders right now on the offensive side. Run game, pass game. They got some misdirection going here, and they're gaining chunks of yardage every clip. And that's what you want to see from this. Chase Daniels did an excellent job of leading this team. Great blocking up front. We speak about those guys in the backfield, but you can't say enough about that front line either. Wolford, last two seasons in the Big 12, 90 of 90 as far as the extra points are concerned and he hits the second one through and just like that 744 to play in our first quarter Macklin picks up the touchdown and it's 14 nothing Missouri it'll be first and 10 with the ball on the 11 talk about his Lillard and, and his approach what you notice in, in his drop back and from the shotgun as well is that he is looking off of his receivers very well at this point. He's looking opposite, looking straight down the middle, and then at the last second, he's able to snap to his receivers and get the ball out. That's Miller. what's making him successful at this point. Throws it out of bounds, and defensively for the Tigers, good job on the coverage. Striker Shulak was in there. Southeast Missouri State. Vincent White, the offensive coordinator. You know, they've been able to find a little success on this drive, throwing it through the air. And that was uh, the Achilles heel last weekend, no doubt, for that Missouri defense. And that's the game plan for the Red Hawks, is to come out here and throw the ball around the field. We talked about Houston Lillard and his success last week. He has some success on this drive. As long as they can protect him, as the big boys can protect him and give him some time with his athletic ability and his arm, 
he can have some good days. End zone and just out of bounds for the intended receiver, Miles Edwards. Edwards leads the uh, FCS in receiving at yards a, uh, per game after week one, 204. He had uh, 10 receptions over the weekend, seventh in all-purpose yards. He is a big target and the number one target for Southeast Missouri State. Just a little slant and go. We call it a sluggo on this route, and it's a, actually a perfectly thrown ball. You want to throw the ball to a wide receiver in the back corner of the end zone where only he can get it, get one foot in bounds, and there's no opportunity where a defensor, defender can come into play. Well-thrown ball. He's got to make that catch. Third and ten. Blitz coming. Looking end zone and out of bounds. So fourth down here for Southeast Missouri State. And their outstanding kicker, Doug Spada, I'm sure will come on, and they'll try to get points on the board. Spada is only a junior. Coming out of this drive with an opportunity, obviously, they would like to get six points or, and ultimately seven points. But coming out of this drive, getting three points on the board or at least getting a field goal opportunity is a win for the Red Hawks. To be able to march down the field in the fashion that they did, that's what they need to instill some confidence in this unit. 28-yard attempt is blocked. Missouri blocked it. As it spoke too out soon. Of spoke too soon. Hood says he got a hand on it. That right there is huge. We hit, Missouri emphasizes special teams. They blocked one last week against Illinois, and I'm sure they were stressing to block more this week. They had a lot of penetration there, and Ziggy Hood got there. I think he got a paw on it. And any confidence that Simo would have had right there making three points is kind of shut out the window there. Yeah, that's Ziggy Hood all the way. Big number 94 got through. Here's that big spread offense now with Macklin in motion for the Missouri Tigers. Daniel, little middle screen set up, plenty of room. And that is Chase Kaufman. He's an All-American candidate, the big tight end. Well, what's that say about your offense when you can you know, set up so many plays for your tight end over the middle, down the sidelines, deep? It doesn't matter. I mean, this guy is such a great talent. Well, I look at this unit in its entirety and look at the weapons that they have. And I have to go back to the, to the 90s and even into the 80s at the University of Miami or the Florida States to know, uh, uh, recognize a team with so many weapons all on the field at one time. You can concentrate on Jeremy Macklin right there with the sweep route going across the right side, and then he'll they'll try to take him away. You got Kaufman. You try to take Kaufman away. You got Derek Washington. You have Jared Perry. You have multiple weapons on this offense, and it's almost impossible to stop. Macklin, the Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. Third time he's done that. He had 234 all-purpose yards against Illinois at the Dome last week. Daniel. Throw. What a throw. He had to thread the needle to Jared Perry. <laughs> Again, that was another empty set. Jared Perry got open. I believe it was a double move that he made, and he got open in that seam, and there he is. A little pump fake from Chase Daniel. That freezes the defense. And Jared Perry goes up in traffic, makes a great catch, and the most important thing, he held onto the ball. Uh oh, a little trickery here. Looking end zone. Wow. Washington possesses. He has great hands as a receiver, and that's great patience right there. But wait for that ball to come down and catch it. I'll tell you what, Dan, what we should have had in here, we had a, we should have had a little wager to figure out whether or not it was going to be less than or earlier than one minute left in the first quarter before they go schoolyard. They bring out the schoolyard plays with one minute left in the first quarter, and that's the confidence that's instilled on this Missouri Tiger offense and with Coach Pinkle. Extra point is good, 21-nothing Missouri. Chase Daniel tonight, if you're wondering, 10 of 11, 167 yards, two touchdowns, his longest has been 28 yards. And it's been just one drive that we've seen that uh, Southeast Missouri State has had a little success. Missouri in the first quarter, very impressive, 17 plays, Four minutes, 43 seconds, and they've got 21 points. We mentioned that Chase Daniel is chasing history. Missouri all-time passing leaders 
Brad Smith, Chase Daniel, Jeff Handy, Phil Bradley, Marlon Adler. And you see uh, Chase Daniel, 8,670. So he's closing in on Brad Smith. And at some point, possibly even tonight, he's going to break that mark. Southeast Missouri State, by the way, 23 plays in the first quarter. Their time of possession, they'd have to be happy with this. 10 minutes and 17 seconds. The only problem is they can't <laughs> stop Missouri's offense. And, and that's a little bit of a misnomer right there to have that kind of time of possession. Sometimes it can look better than it really is. The fact remains is that the MU Tigers are scoring very quickly on offense, and they're moving the ball down the field with big chunks of offense. So they're not going to have the ball as long as Southeast Missouri. Southeast Missouri needs to have some more points on the board and not be so concerned or not make it look so good. The only thing that they can take away from that first quarter is that they had the ball for 10 minutes. There's Chase Daniel again out of the shotgun. Saunders with his second catch of the night. Across the 25 and knocked down at the 26. You know, something that stands out about this Missouri offense, and you always hear spread offense, and you always talk about skilled players and the skilled positions. There you see the total yards, 235 for Mizzou and 80 for Southeast Missouri. The offensive linemen are taking huge splits, which is also going to open up the running game a little bit for Missouri this year, too. Well, that's definitely true, and what you talk about when you say the spread offense, Everybody thinks the first thing they think about is the wide receivers, the, the running backs and the shifting and the movement and the four receivers on one side of the field. It's Jimmy spread Jackson. all over. Yep, Jimmy Jackson, the tailback, and again, Gary Pinkle talked about this being the old man in the backfield, Jimmy Jackson. <laughs> And he does a great job right here breaking through the tackle when you are running back you have to recognize that there's at least one defender on the other side that you have to beat and you have to break the tackle he does a great job not only breaking through that tackle but hitting the corner with the speed jackson with the catch and the tackle by eddie calvin huge crowd here tonight close to 60,000 here at perot field a gorgeous night for football. Paul is in the air. We'll have another pay-per-view next Saturday. The schedule. A lot of people looking at Missouri having a chance to possibly run the table. That's Jackson again. So Derek Washington is on the sideline right here getting a breather. And Jimmy Jackson able to spell him. And you don't really drop a lot, do you? You don't. Jimmy Jackson's a great running back. He gets, he gets up the field very quickly, and if you got to spell a guy like Derek Washington, Jimmy Jackson's a great guy to do that with. You see those big splits by the offensive lineman. Here's Chase Daniel again. Plenty of time, and he'll just dump it off. Jackson is there, his outlet. Good coverage that time by Southeast Missouri State, but Chase Daniel knows this offense like the back of his hand. I mean, it just comes second nature to him. You could see him right there, looking one point, next point, that point. Yeah, he looked at three different receivers all covered, then just dumps it off to Jackson. And you saw that last week as well against Illinois. The great thing about Chase Daniel, we can look at the stats, you can look at the numbers, the record-breaking uh, numbers that he has, but the decision-making that he does with the ball, whether it's tucking and running or hitting the, the guys on the sideline or just throwing the ball away, that's what you want from your quarterback is a guy that's going to make good decisions. Another back is in for the Missouri Tigers. That's Devin Moore, the tailback. His first carry of the night. This guy here, Devin Moore, is a redshirt freshman. And we just spoke about Jimmy Jackson, but that's a hard run by Devin Moore. He's going to get some playing time tonight, and he's going to run hard. Good to see some of these young players have a chance to come into game action, show what they can do. As you mentioned, the redshirt is off, so he's excited about playing here tonight, no doubt. Chase Daniel with a 21-0 lead. And Moore is the carrier again. His second carry of the night. Second consecutive time he's had the ball. And what's good about Coach Pinkle and his approach with these young guys is that what you would expect as far as maybe in the second half being up by 30, 40 points, let's move these young guys in, which he's going to do his portion of that. But he also knows how to move these guys in early in the game so they get the real one-on-one -on -one action, first string versus first string action, which are top players as opposed to just garbage time late in the fourth quarter. Watch out here, Perry inside the 10, touchdown Missouri. Jared Perry, 28 yards. Big 
play by the junior, Jared Perry, right there. We talked about how many playmakers MU Tigers have, how many playmakers they have on this offense and defensive unit. The ball keeps getting spread around. This spread offense is just not about the splits. It's about spreading the ball around to the different type of playmakers. Right here is just a wide receiver screen, and he makes it happen from there. And what makes that play is the down the field blocking. You see Tommy Saunders in the picture. He made a great block down there as well as this lineman. Extra point is good. Eight plays, 82 yards, and it only took two minutes and 48 seconds. Quick work by the offense once again. 28 to nothing. Number six in the country on time. Last time that these two teams met up, Southeast Missouri State and the Missouri Tigers was back in 1936. So times have changed a little bit, guys. Jason Ray, Daniel Hughes, Dan McLaughlin back with you. It's 28 to nothing in favor of the Missouri Tigers. The offense has been so impressive here tonight. Chase Daniel, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Dan, and I'll start with you. 14 of 15, and he is not disappointed. He is not disappointed. He's making great decisions, and he has the playmakers around him. They're able to, to get the ball to the running backs. They're able to get the ball to every receiver pretty much out there that's eligible, and you can't say enough about the front line and what they're doing with that offensive line and the protection that they're giving. Jason would love another year of eligibility. I would. I <laughs> really back would. back out there, put the helmet back on, get some receptions, get some touchdowns. I mean, this has got to be fun, and you are a big part of this. Yeah, it is fun watching these guys. I played with these guys last season and they are great character guys and some great athletes. So it will be nice to be out there on the gridiron with them again, but at the same time, I'm glad to be where I am right now, and I'm glad to be supporting these Tigers. Wolford will kick it away. And it's fielded at the five. And there's a hole. Watch out. To the 45. And knocked out of bounds is Jacob McKinley. So McKinley, a nice return for... Southeast Missouri State, and there was Trey Hobson on the stop, a backup defensive back for Missouri. Good job right here. Just a nice kick, not too deep, right at the six-yard line, but look at the wedge and what they're able to do with Southeast Missouri. You get a hat on a hat, and you let your guy run. Now, the great thing about the return right there as well is he did not slow down to make his cuts. He was able to be patient, but still have that burst to get the ball out to the 45. That was a 40-yard return for the Red Hawks in good field position here on the ball on the 45. They've had one possession where they were able to move it. Ooh, nearly picked off. There he is again, Weatherspoon. Let's take a look at the remaining schedule. It's early in the season for the Missouri Tigers. Again, next week, pay-per-view. And then uh, the 20th, Buffalo. Then it gets interesting. Bo Pelini, first year in Nebraska. Oklahoma State. Maybe the biggest game in the regular season will be at number 10, Texas. That is going to be a very tough game. Colorado, Baylor, K-State, Iowa State. And then last year, like we said uh, before, Kansas should be very tough at number 14 in the country. That'll be at Arrowhead. But a lot of people, guys, are pointing to that game at Texas. They'll swing it out across midfield and close to a first down. How would you size up that game at Texas? Well, my red shirt freshman year, we went down to Texas and lost. And it, it, to play in Austin is a tough, it's a tough venue to play in. Their fans rally behind the team. But looking at this year, with what Chase Daniels doing with this offense, with the success of the defense, I'd say the Missouri Tigers have a good shot of going down there. And with the preparation that Coach Pinkle's staff has, they may do really well down there. I know there's a few games in between, but that game is something that we'd have to take a look at. I think right now you'd have to say, after watching the Tigers against Illinois, and at times tonight even against Southeast Missouri State, the pass defense has to improve. But Danon, the big thing for me is who's going to stop this team offensively? I can't see a defense in the country that can play right now with Mizzou. Well, I don't think there is. And I think if you want to be the best, you got to go and beat the best. And ten Texas right now is number 10 in the nation. So you're going to ask Coach Pinkle and his staff and, and all the players on that sideline, they want to play the best at the time that they're the best. And, and Texas is just a, in the road right now. They're just a stumbling block, a road bump in their way to the national championship. They truly believe that and at the same time I don't think there is a defense out here that can stay with them especially with the success that they have in the no huddle second down and 10 mm -hmm. and it's picked off picked off goodbye Weatherspoon all the way and that'll be six for Missouri Sean Weatherspoon what a strike to his season another interception 
and another touchdown. He had one against Illinois. A touchdown return. Chalk up another against Southeast Missouri State. I tell you what, when you talk about a ball hawk, you talk about Weatherspoon and what he's able to bring to this defense. He has a nose for the ball. He has an eye for the ball. He has the hands for the ball. He should be on the offensive side. He wears number 12. <laughs> Put him in at wide receiver if you need him. But I tell you what, he's a playmaker. He's the type of leader and the type of playmaker you need to have on this defense. It just amazes me, Dan, that they have everything hitting so early in this season on all three phases of the game. Offense, defense, special teams, they're at the tops in all three. So, 64-yard return for Weatherspoon. Right here you can see Lillard does something different that he has not done this whole game. He looks straight at his receiver the entire route. We talked earlier about his knack for looking down the field or looking opposite and snapping around and making the throw. Right here, he is focused on the receiver, which brings every black helmet into that zone. Weatherspoon's able to make the play and use the speed down the sideline. And Scheibel is the quarterback. Swings it out to the left side and incompletes. But also Gary Pinkel talked about, and it wasn't set in stone, but when we visited with him on Thursday that you know, some of these players, first teamers, and guys that are on the cusp of being a first teamer would play the first half. But at this point, you know, you're up 35 nothing. Might be counterproductive. Yeah. Slick field. You just don't want guys getting hurt. Yeah, and that's that's the, the, the chance that you take. And, and Jason, you tell me, when when you are a backup and you have an opportunity in these type of games, what's the kind of thought process in the meetings or what did Coach Pinkle or your position coach really come out and share with you about your opportunities that may arise in this type of environment? Well, the coaches, they prepare the backup players as they would a starter. And as a, as a backup player, you pretty much know that, you know, in a game like this, there's a potential that you will be in the game, that you will get a shot to play. So you have to be ready at all times. Ziggy Hood again with the pressure up front. Third down. And Perot Field again will come alive. Third and ten. Chase Patton and Blaine Gabbard, we understand, on the sidelines from Missouri getting loose. We anticipate seeing both of them at some point tonight. That's short of the first down, and good job defensively by the Missouri Tigers to break up the pass. And that was Vaughn's again, and the intended receiver was Miles Edwards. Here's a look at Blaine Gabbard. Highly touted freshman quarterback with a bright future here. They have another quarterback, Chase Patton, that is listed as number two, the senior. Uh, but this guy, they really believe, can fill the shoes of Chase Daniel and has a bright future ahead of him. So they're going to try to pull that shirt off of him and give him an opportunity to show his stuff out here tonight. Low snap and a great kick. Sending Macklin back to the 22. There he goes again at midfield. Tell you what, <laughs> give uh, Doug Spada some credit. The punter for Southeast Missouri State, number one, low snap, fielded that, and then he just hit a booming kick. But Macklin with his speed, he makes up for it and gets it across midfield. You see Jeremy Macklin right here, and here is the problem that you have when you have a small unit, only 63 scholarships. You got some of the big boys from the Red Hawks that can't get down the field as fast as everybody else. That saves the touchdown for him. So it's not about the coverage at that point. It's just that you have some slower guys on the Red Hawks that just can't cover punts. Right, and with a guy like Macklin, that's dangerous if you have guys out there that don't have the foot speed to cover him. Return of 29, and this is Washington. And he picks up maybe two or three on the play. And you can move the ball as well as MU can. How do you reel back and try to take some of the heat off of a, a, a lesser type of opponent? You really can't. Your run game is just as deadly as your pass game. And Jason, I want to ask you this, because you were part of the offense for Gary Pinkle. I asked him on Thursday. I said, when you get up late in the game, do you have something in your package that you can say, okay, offensively, we're able to just take it back a little bit, put the ball on the ground, because you guys are, are it's like 100 miles an hour out there, and it's pass, 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 but 
to try to take some of that clock away. And I think, Danny, that's what you're talking about. Jason, is there something that you see that the Tigers have in that package offensively that they can do? Well, offensively, I think for Mizzou, they will run the ball a lot more. In situations like this, when the game starts to get a little out of hand and you want to pull back, you will run the game. You will run the ball. But at the same time, those backs can still break for long yardage. So there's really a lose-lose situation in the sense. Great job right there by Tommy Saunders getting one foot in bounds and being able to tiptoe, still concentrate, hit the ball with control of the football and get the first down. It's taken at the 13-yard line. Jimmy Jackson with the carry. We've seen Washington. We've seen Jackson spreading the football around is Chase Daniel. Macklin has been somewhat quiet tonight, but Chase Daniel has been almost perfect. 16 of 17, 245 yards, three touchdowns, his longest 28. It's a game for a lot of guys right there, those numbers. We're still only shortly into the second quarter. Hesitation and taken down inside the 10, brought down at the five is Washington. Again, that's another example of the running game. Derek Washington sidesteps the defender there, and he has great blocking downfield. He loads the shoulder and gets up the field. That's a great, that's a great run by a great running back. Daniel standing on the 12-yard line. Washington. Touchdown. His third of the night. Great job right there by Washington finding the hole. But I tell you what, everybody is probably tired of us talking about Derek Washington, Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin. Let's talk about number 72, Fisher, Madison, Barnes, Gregory, Brown. Those big horses up front are doing a great job and have done a great job from last year into this year, only losing two offensive linemen. Uh, for, as seniors and having still that deep unit at the offensive line, that's what opens things up for this offense. Extra point is good to make it 42 to nothing in favor of the Missouri Tigers. Big touchdowns on the night for number 20. And the South, and there's a look at the Chase Patton. He is now the quarterback, as Gary Pinkle told Todd, they're going to switch off series. But the North Division is Colorado, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Missouri, and Nebraska. There's a first down for the Missouri Tigers. They swing it out to the left side. Jarrell Jackson with the reception for Mizzou. And let's check in with Todd once again. Well, you just saw Jarrell Jackson make a real nice catch. He's one of the typical Mizzou guys who didn't come with a lot of so-called stars when it came to recruiting. He was a two-star recruit out of Houston. Why? Because between his junior and senior year, he didn't go to any of the uh, evaluation camps where players get rated. But... The coaches went down to Houston. They saw this guy play. They said, this guy is a player, and here he is playing big-time college football. They look at a guy, and they look at his talent. They don't necessarily look at those stars, the five-star guys. Of course, you're going to get some guys like that in a big-time program like this, but the guys like Jarrell Jackson, who are under the radar, are great players, and, we got, and Mizzou really does identify those guys. That one by Devin Moore, that carry for Mizzou. Here's a good example, by the way, of, of something that Missouri has changed a little bit. And, Jason, you can speak to this. But zone blocking is something that they've done an awful lot of. And you just saw there with the guard and the tackle pulling. That's, you know, one of the aspects that Gary Pinkle was talking about and Dave Christensen trying to get the guards and the tackles a little bit more active this year as far as, you know, pulling and, and getting them out and being aggressive in that type of scheme blocking as opposed to what they've done in the past. Yeah, that's right. In, in the offensive line, that's where it starts. Up front, if you're successful up front, you're going to give your quarterbacks time to throw the ball, and that's what the O-line does. And with that zone blocking, they are really quick, and they get around there, and they're able to pull and get guys out and kick guys out and give time for the, for the quarterback to get the ball off. It's nine different players for Missouri that uh, have had touches as far as catches tonight. 42 to nothing, Mizzou. Under six minutes to go here in our third quarter of play. Near the first down once again, hard running Devin Moore. Good job there by Devin Moore. And when you watch good running backs or, or strong running backs, confident running backs, those are the running backs that can get to the sideline and know that they're about to get 
tackle, but still fall forward and get violent on the sideline. There's no tiptoeing and high-stepping out of bounds to absorb the hit or not take a hit. Each one of these running backs on the Mizzou Tigers, they know how to get violent on the sideline and deliver blows. Devin Moore out of St. Louis. He's a redshirt freshman. One of the young players at Gary Pinkle is highlighted as being the future as Patton overshoots the uh, contented receiver. What kind of ball Jason does uh, Chase Patton throw as opposed to Chase Daniel? Well, they both have the ability to put a lot of great touch on the ball. Some might say that Chase Patton has a bigger arm. He does get the ball up and down the field. But again, Chase Daniel is so special. He's very deceptive in his arm strength. But both of them are great quarterbacks. And as you see there, that's a tight spiral. Maybe New Steve should have came down with the ball. But we do have a flag on the play. That's easier said than done. Andrew <laughs> Jones was 5.23 to go in our third quarter of play. Chase Patton on second down, hands it off. And wrestled down, it's Devin Moore. In on the stop was William Castro of Southeast Missouri State. Southeast Missouri State out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Of course, Mizzou out of the Big 12. Gary Pinkle, 50 and 37 at Missouri, eight years, 17 years overall. Game last week against Illinois for Pinkle was his 200th as a college head coach. Watch out, Patton is hit, but gets rid of it. How unfair it is to play against this MU, MU Tiger offense. Before, right here, great job of Patton being able to look down the middle of the field and hit his outlet, allow his playmakers to make the plays. You don't have to make the perfect throw downfield. Has some heat on him, takes the hit, absorbs the hit, makes a quality throw. But prior to that play, and, we'll, and we'll, I'll share with you right after this kick, what makes this MU Tiger offense so powerful? 43-yard field goal attempt, and it is good. He nailed it. 45 to nothing. Wolf Chase Patton in a quarterback for Mizzou. Low snap. Good protection. Over the middle, and the catch is made. Chase Patton picks up the first down for the Tigers. Nice touch on that ball. When Jason spoke about it, he had a lot of reps with Chase Patton, and you know what kind of quarterback he is, but although he has a strong arm, he shows some touch right there. Yeah, he, he's another quarterback. You know, he's getting some time to play here, and he has great touch, and at the same time, he's a big arm. This is Jackson to the outside, close to another first down for Mizzou. Gerald Jackson, a wide receiver, speedy. And Mizzou is going to pick up another first down. That play shows the, the versatility of Will Jackson. He just caught a ball on the previous play, and then they do an inside handoff to him right there, and that's just the mobility that that guy has. And to the Missouri sideline, and a pickup of six on the play. Agnew. Todd Donahoe has more with 10.45 to play. Well, you see, Dan, I want Forrest Shock to catch a pass here tonight for one reason, so you can say, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> <laughs> of course, alluding to the movie Forrest Gump, but if, if he gets the ball tonight, you got to give us a run, Forrest, run. Is that all you have to say about that? That's all i got to say about run, <laughs> Forrest, run. How about run, Devin, run? Devin Moore, big game. Inside the 25 and brought down at the 22. You know, the truck wants me saying, life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> right here. Look at the push up front by the offensive line. Great block downfield. And good job by the running backs. And, and I love that extra little oomph at the end, but each one of these running backs on the Missouri Tiger roster, they know how to get physical on the sideline. And the catch is made by Andrew Jones, his second reception. Bill Malika, our director tonight. Mark Holsey, our producer, our FSN crew. Well done, as always. Under 10 minutes to play, 45-3 Mizzou.
Batten hands it off. Bouncy to the outside and a touchdown for Jackson. Jimmy Jackson. Jimmy Jackson, touchdown. Okay, look at the As you can see, these guys up front, great protection up front, great blocking up front. Jimmy sees the hole, he gets up the field. And that's the great thing about Jimmy Jackson. He's a great running back. Again, a guy that's playing behind Derek Washington, but that's how powerful and potent this offense is. He got an injury on the field. That left side cornerback, number 19. It's Chris Kotner who's down. Actually crumbled right at the end of the run, so he had a, he was in position to maybe put forth some effort and get into the tackle on Jackson as it before he got into the end zone. But as you can see at the top of your screen, you'll see the block, good blocking up top, but then he just fell down, holding his knee. Six Looks like plays. the right knee right here. You'll see it better from this angle. Great job up front by Missouri, but right here at the end, there's no cornerback in the picture because he actually collapses holding his knee. So hopefully it's not too serious, not a, a, a huge injury, but he's being helped off the field right now. And you'd hate to see that at this time of the game with the game pretty much out of reach. Anybody getting injured on either side of the field. Yeah, it's six play drive, 76 yards, and it took one minute and 49 seconds. And if you are Coach Samuels, you're reaching for victory uh, points to make at the end of this game holding them to only 10 points or nine points uh, in the second half and scoring is a big factor it's a 17 yard run that cannon tells us go to break 52 to 3 Missouri out of the reserves I think so. I mean, a lot of times you just got to go out and you got to go do it. And you're going to make mistakes. There are a lot of freshmen playing that second half, uh, and Richard freshmen. But that's, you know, that's how you get better. And, uh, and they're going to make some mistakes. They did. They did some good things. But you got to kind of go out and get dirty. That's part, of, that's, part of, that's part of the experience factor. The only way you can get it is in games. And so I feel really good that uh, we got a lot of kids a lot of time. I take it this is kind of the script you wanted tonight. Get your regulars in the first half, get them worked out well, and then get a chance to see those reserves. Well, ideally, I mean, you know, you come in, you think it's going to go last second, you know, responsibly. That's what I have to do. But this is really, if I had to write a script, this is the way it would come out. We got a lot of work in. Our veterans got to play a lot. I thought they played really hard to the end. I mean, I was very impressed with how they were fighting and competing in the end, and that's really said a lot about them. 